Today's episode features the third stop on our journey through Grimm's Fairy Tales, a story titled The Virgin Mary's Child. My name is Zach Stewart, and these are the Shadow Bear Story Sessions. Welcome to the Shadow Bear Story Sessions. My name is Zach Stewart, and here at Shadow Bear, we look at the folk tales, fairy tales, myths, and legends that shape the world as we know it, and we pick apart just how insanely dark and accidentally hilarious these stories really are. So each week, we'll dig into a new story, and at the end, we'll look past the lessons the story thinks it's teaching to find the lessons it's actually teaching. So today's story is titled The Virgin Mary's Child. We're going through Grimm's Fairy Tales. This is the third entry in the collection. Didn't realize that Grimm's Fairy Tales got religious like this, but it doesn't seem to be really pro-religion or anti-religion. It just seems to sort of include religious characters. Like the last episode took place in a church, but there was nothing particularly religious about it. It was just a setting. So we'll see if Virgin Mary is just someone hanging out in the background or what's going on with, with... The presence of Virgin Mary here. So we begin. A poor woodcutter and his wife lived at the edge of a large forest with their only child, a three-year-old little girl. They were so poor that they couldn't afford daily meals anymore and didn't know how they would provide food for their daughter. One morning, the woodcutter, who was distressed by all this, went into the forest to work. As he began chopping wood, a tall, beautiful woman suddenly appeared before him. She was wearing a crown of shining stars on her head, and she said to him, I am the Virgin Mary, mother of the Christ child. Since you are poor and needy, bring me your child. I'll take her with me and be her mother and look after her. Didn't realize Virgin Mary just went around adopting children, but suppose that's benevolent of her. Continuing, the woodcutter obeyed her. He fetched his child and gave her to the Virgin Mary, who took her up to heaven. Once there, everything went well for the girl. She ate only cake and drank sweet milk. Her clothes were made of gold, and the little angels played with her. One day, by the time the girl turned fourteen, the Virgin Mary had to go on a long journey. Before she went away, she summoned the girl and said, "'Dear child, I am trusting you with the keys to the thirteen doors of the kingdom of heaven.' You may open twelve of the doors and look at the marvelous things inside, but I forbid you to open the thirteenth door this little key unlocks. This is just coming across like an Adam and Eve apple situation all over again. Anyway. The maiden promised to obey her commands, and after the Virgin Mary had departed, she opened a new room every day and looked into the rooms of the heavenly realm. In each one of them there was an apostle in dazzling light. Never in her life had she seen such splendor and glory. When she had finished opening the twelve doors, the forbidden door was the only one left. For a long time she resisted her curiosity, but finally she was overcome by it, and opened the thirteenth door as well. Which is really inevitable whenever any story sets out one thing the person can't do. They're gonna do the thing. And as the door sprang open, she saw the Holy Trinity sitting in fire and splendor. Then she touched the flames a little bit with her finger, and the finger turned golden. Quickly, she slammed the door shut and ran away. Her heart started pounding and wouldn't stop. A few days later, the Virgin Mary returned from her journey and asked the maiden to return the keys of heaven to her. What, was Virgin Mary just going on a work trip? What was this? When the girl handed her the bunch of keys, the Virgin looked into her eyes and said, Didn't you also open the thirteenth door? No, she answered. Then the Virgin Mary put her hand on the maiden's heart and could feel it pounding and pounding. Now she knew the girl had disobeyed her command and had opened the door. Once again she asked, Are you sure you didn't open the door? I'm sure. The maiden denied doing it for a second time. Maiden's doubling down on this. When the Virgin Mary glanced at the finger that had become golden from touching the heavenly fire, she knew the maiden was guilty and said, You've disobeyed me and lied. 
you're no longer worthy to stay in heaven. Oh, jeez. It's a 14-year-old girl. This is harsh. She's throwing her out. All at once, the girl sank into a deep sleep, and when she awoke, she was lying on the earth beneath a tall tree surrounded by thick bushes so that she was completely encircled. Her mouth was also locked so that she couldn't utter one word. Since the tree was hollow, she could sit inside during rain and storms, and it was also where she slept. This is terrible. A 14-year-old girl lied once so she gets banished to live in a tree and be mute? My god. Roots and wild berries were her only food, and she went out looking for them as far as she could walk. In the autumn, she gathered roots and leaves and carried them into the hollow tree. This is, this is sad. This is worse than before. At least she had her parents. Instead of getting swept off to get essentially tricked. She's a 14-year-old girl. She's going to do the one thing you say she can't do. Gets tricked into lying and then uh, thrown back into a tree and mute. Ugh. When snow and ice came, she sat inside the tree. Before long, her clothes became tattered and one piece after the other fell off her body. Oh my god, this just gets worse and worse. So she sat there completely covered by leaves. As soon as the sun began to shine again, she went out and sat in front of the tree. Her long hair covered her on all sides like a cloak. One day during springtime, she was sitting in front of the tree when someone forced his way through the bushes. It was the king, who had been hunting in the forest and had lost his way, and he was amazed to find such a beautiful maiden sitting alone in this desolate spot. So he asked her whether she would like to come with him to his castle. All right, she's finally catching a break after living in the tree for a while. However, she couldn't answer. Oh. Instead, she merely nodded a little with her head. Then the king lifted her up onto his horse and brought her to the castle. It's a good king. It's a good, nice king. Soon, who became so fond of her that he made her his wife. Hey, she's catching a few breaks now. Even in spite of the mute thing. After a year had passed, the queen gave birth to a beautiful son. During the night, however, the Virgin Mary appeared before her and said, If you'll tell me the truth and say yes that you unlocked the forbidden door, I'll give you back the power of speech, without which you really can't enjoy life. Well, that's a horrible thing to say. Mute people can enjoy life just fine. Mary's the one that took her voice away, and now she's trying to make it seem awful when the maiden seems to be doing pretty well for herself. She seems happier than ever. She's queen, she's in love, she has a baby. Doesn't matter that she's mute, she's having a great life now. Now that Mary's not in it. But Mary has to come back and rain on her parade, I guess. Mary continues. If you are stubborn and won't confess, I shall take your baby away with me. That's just cruel. She sent the maiden back to live abandoned in a tree. She managed to survive a winter in that tree by foraging for roots and berries completely naked and alone, she deserves whatever she gets after that. She deserves anything she can achieve after that. She has shown more strength of character than Mary at this point. Now she's finally got this great situation with a king, and now Virgin Mary's coming back and trying to kidnap her child. But the queen remained stubborn and denied that she had opened the forbidden door. You know what? Good for her. Virgin Mary can, can just deal with this. This is Virgin Mary's issue. Go back up to heaven. Do what you want to do. Leave me alone. I've got this good thing going on. I've got a son. I'm, I'm queen now. Things worked out great. No thanks to you. Ugh. All right. Continuing. So the Virgin Mary took the little child and disappeared with him. The next morning, when the baby was no longer there, a rumor began circulating among the people that the queen was an ogress and had eaten her own child. Oh, dear. Then another year passed, and the queen gave birth to another son. Once more, the Virgin Mary appeared before her and asked her to tell the truth. Otherwise, she would also lose the second child. Mind your own business, Mary. Stay up there. Why are you meddling in this? Ugh. But the queen persisted in denying that she had opened the forbidden door, so the Virgin Mary took the child away with her. 
The next morning, when this baby was also missing, the king's counselors said openly that the queen was an ogress, and they demanded that she be executed for her godless deeds. At this point, Mary's meddling has only led to worsening and worsening situations for this maiden. At least she had parents before. But then the first time Mary meddled, it ended up with the maiden being stuck in a tree, mute and naked and alone, left there to die. Somehow she managed to figure it out, get to be queen, have a family. Then the second time the Virgin Mary meddles, now she's being accused of being an ogress and is going to be executed. Stop meddling, Mary. You're not helping. So however, the king ordered them to keep quiet and refused to believe them because he loved his wife so much. Stand up guy, this king. In the third year, the queen gave birth to a princess. Bet I know what's going to happen now. And the Virgin Mary appeared before her once more and took her to heaven where she showed her how her two oldest children were playing with the globe of the earth. Thereupon, the Virgin Mary asked the queen once more to confess her mistake and stop lying. However, the queen wouldn't budge and continued to stand by her story. So the Virgin Mary left her and took away her third child too. This is just, at this point, at this point, just admit it. Just admit it. Get your kids back. This is ridiculous. The self-righteous Mary is just on a tear here. Or fight her. I don't know. Fight her. Challenge her. I, the, what, what's been done to try and put up a fight against Mary? Can Mary just do whatever she wants? Call in the guards when Mary comes in. Intervene somehow. The king is really on your side. Do something. You're not helpless here, maiden. You are not helpless here. Do something. Fight back. In, in lieu of that, just admit it. Get your kids back. Jesus. Now the king could no longer restrain his counselors, who continued to claim that the queen was an ogress. Man. They were certain, and since she couldn't speak, she couldn't defend herself. Right, because Mary had made her mute and taken away her voice, like she'd taken away everything else. Mary took away her parents, Mary took away her voice, Mary took away her three kids. Mary is really not helping anything here. Uh, so they were certain, since she couldn't speak, she couldn't defend herself. Consequently, she was condemned to die at the stake. Isn't she like 17 at this point still? Give her a break. Okay, it's a little weird that she's had these kids so fast with this king, who found her when she was maybe at most 15 because she was in the tree for a full winter. But man, this is, this is some harsh consequences for a very, very young teenage girl. As she stood tied to the stake, and the fire began to burn all around her, her heart was moved, and she thought to herself, Oh, before I die, I'd like to confess to the Virgin Mary that I opened the forbidden door in heaven. I've been so wicked by denying it all this time. Yeah, okay, you should have been honest. You really should have been honest. You should have been honest before. But you know what? I do not think the maiden is the only party to blame here. I think Virgin Mary bears plenty of the responsibility for this terrible situation and has only made things worse. She's a 14-year-old child when she lied. Give her a break. We continue. And just as she was thinking all this to herself... Heaven opened up right then and there, and the Virgin Mary descended with the two little sons at either side and the daughter in her arms. The fire was extinguished by itself, and the Virgin Mary stepped forward to greet the queen and said, Since you want to speak the truth, your guilt is forgiven. Then she handed the queen her children, opened her mouth so that she could speak from then on, and bestowed happiness on her for the rest of her life. And that's the end. Man. All right. Meet me after the break, and we'll get into the autopsy and dig into what the hell was going on here. Welcome to a section of the podcast called The Autopsy, where we will dissect just what the hell happened. 
All right, so I'm going to break this down. There is a poor woodcutter and his wife. Virgin Mary sees that they have a daughter who they're worried about feeding. Virgin Mary says, hey, I will take the child and give her a wonderful life. But then she's not really living, though, is she? You're just taking her up to heaven. She's not having a life. She's kind of just dead already and in heaven. I mean, that's a metaphor and the child actually starved to death. Hmm. A little dark. Anyway, moving on. The woodcutter obeyed her, gave her the child. child. She ate only cake and drank sweet milk. Not particularly healthy or nutritious for a growing child. And then when she was 14, so maybe 10 years at most, maybe a little less, she's with Mary. Mary goes on a work trip or something, gives her the one rule, don't open the 13th door. Of course she does. She's a 14-year-old girl. She's going to do it. And then Virgin Mary comes back, says, didn't you open the 13th door? So she kind of knows already. Before she even sees the finger, before she even checks her heart and sees that it's pounding, she says, didn't you also open the 13th door? So she kind of knows. So she basically did set her up. She knew she was going to. And she says no. Maiden says no. Asks her again. Maiden doubles down. Because she lied, she apparently is no longer worthy to stay in heaven. She's just she, she's just a young girl. She didn't live a, live a full life and then get to heaven. She's just a kid. This is all she's known. To be honest, it's not surprising that a girl who grew up in heaven wouldn't really have an understanding of dire consequences of a decision like lying. It's also a little odd to believe that she got to 14 with ever without ever trying to lie before. But I guess that's what we're supposed to believe. And then one lie, and she is thrown into a tree to die. Mute. Takes her voice, throws her into a tree. Good luck. Good riddance. That's not learning a lesson. That's not teaching a child a lesson, throwing them into a tree to die and taking their voice away. If all parents, the first time their child lied to them, threw their kid into a tree to die alone and abandoned, we as a species would not have survived. That's just something that happens. You can teach a lesson without abandoning your child to die in the forest. All right, then after a what I'm assuming was a horrible winter in the tree, she somehow is found by this king on a hunting party who really takes shine to her, his naked 14 or 15 year old girl he found in the forest little questionable but anyway they come back at some point they get married things seem to be going well against all odds started out naked in a tree now she's queen going pretty well but oh no mary comes back and says hey remember that one time you lied yeah i'm gonna take your kid unless you admit to it At this point, the maiden should have probably just thought, you know what, I've got a good thing going. Yeah, fine, I lied. Let's move on from this. But no, she doubles down, triples down, quadruples down, and first child gets taken away. Same thing happens again. Another child gets taken away. Now everyone is saying that the queen is an ogress. Not a good look. And then the third time it happens, the king's counselors just say, she's doing something to these kids. She's a monster. We have to get rid of her. Maybe just don't have kids. Is this manifesting in any other way? Her being an ogress? Are they getting any other indications? Is she doing anything else wrong? Is it just this weird kid thing? I mean, I'm sure the maiden would try to explain the situation. And considering the fact that she entered this kingdom by being found by the king in the forest. Admittedly, that doesn't help her case of convincing people she's not an ogress. But on the other hand, forest people are mystical. Maybe it's not that unbelievable that somehow she has interactions with some other deity or supernatural being, or whatever you call Virgin Mary, I guess. I went to three years of Catholic school, I should probably know the title for her. But in any event... They don't believe whatever her explanation is, which is understandable. When your babies keep disappearing and your explanation is, 
the Virgin Mary keeps kidnapping them because I lied to her once a few years ago and she just won't let it go, I don't know that I blame the counselors for being a little skeptical of that explanation. So the counselors condemn her to die, and the Virgin Mary takes her up and shows her her kids and says, and again questions her, did you lie? Really, at this point, Maiden is being needlessly stubborn. She must feel the pressure kind of building. The heat, the heat is rising back at the kingdom. It's, it's pointless to just stay, stay the course here. All right, I respect you know, sticking up for yourself, but it, this, is, this is not going well. You gotta, you gotta admit some humility here, Maiden. Or at least fight back. I don't know what you can do. Exhaust some options. We don't really see any, any alternatives. Think outside the box. Get creative. I don't know. In any event, Queen doesn't budge. Sticks by her story. Virgin Mary sends her back. No kids. So then only when the Queen is literally tied to the stake with the flames around her does she say, All right, fine. I admit it. And at that point, everything is great, and everything works out. The kids come back. I don't know how Maiden explained that. I don't know. It seems like everyone saw this Virgin Mary descend with the two sons at either side and the daughter in her arms. The fire was extinguished by itself. The Virgin Mary stepped forward to the queen and said, Okay, yeah. So I don't know if, if everyone could see that or if that was only visible to the Maiden. Mary comes back and bestowed happiness on her for the rest of her life. Well, I'm sure she didn't lie to her again. Is that the one rule? Don't lie? Is the king also accountable for these rules? Because I'm sure running a kingdom, you gotta lie once in a while. You gotta do something nefarious to maintain your power. I don't know how running a kingdom works. And yet, in this story, Mary is just kind of a character who is all-powerful in a way. There's not really a religious bent to this. or It's, it's not really in a religious context. It's very much a folktale. Mary just happens to be a character in it who is kind of all-powerful and all-knowing and the moral, or what is portrayed in the story as the moral center. Whether she actually is, is certainly debatable, because her contributions are not always positive. But it is interesting that she's more of a character here. This isn't a religious book. This isn't a religious teaching, really. It's just, it's a folktale. It happens to include the Virgin Mary as the person teaching the lesson. Speaking of which, let's get into that lesson. So the intended lesson is obviously tell the truth. But I think it's way more complicated than that, as it always is. I think the real lesson is get ready to deal with self-righteous people because they are out there and they will impose their weird arbitrary rules and moral ideologies on you. People will overreact to petty bullshit, so get ready to deal with self-righteous assholes because they're out there. I don't mean to... I guess I kind of do mean to call, in this particular story, Mary, a self-righteous asshole, because she kind of is. She leaves a girl to die in a tree. That's not cool. That's not good parenting. I don't want to upset any religious people. This is not a religious story. This is Grimm's fairy tales. If you have a problem with this, take it up with the Brothers Grimm. This is not in the Bible. This is not in a religious text of any kind. This is a collection of folk tales that just happens to include Virgin Mary in it. So take issue with Grimm's fairy tales for including that character. I don't want to hear anything about this. But yeah, I think that's the lesson. Get ready to deal with self-righteous people who will overreact to petty, petty nonsense. All right, now for a section of the podcast called Adaptation, where we adapt this into a movie, TV show, miniseries, whatever is the most appropriate. So this one is definitely going to be either a miniseries or maybe a Netflix or HBO type like eight episode, ten episode. You can probably get eight to ten episodes out of this. We'll really dig into the to the drama of it. You could take it slow. You could sort of draw out the dramatic elements and the interpersonal connections. We could see her more with the king. You, you could do a lot with this. You could do a whole episode just her living in the wilderness, trying to make it through. You could get real intense there. So, casting. The woodcutter, Nick Offerman, obviously. 
no other choice there. The maiden, I don't know any young actresses. Zendaya. The maiden is Zendaya. I don't know any young actresses. The Virgin Mary, Kate Blanchett. Virgin Mary is going to be Kate Blanchett. She can look graceful, benevolent, otherworldly, ethereal, and then she can turn and look really mean and there will be consequences and she gets real serious. So there's our casting. The entire first episode will just be with the woodcutter. And then at the end of the first episode, Kate Blanchett shows up, very dramatic, and then a very heartfelt goodbye as Baby and Kate Blanchett go up to heaven. Next episode, lots of great stuff happening in heaven, montage of Baby growing up, and then halfway through that episode, Kate Blanchett goes on her trip, and we see everything going on with Zendaya and the Twelve Apostles. Maybe we have some interesting moments there. That was a weird element with each door leading to an apostle and a bunch of bunch of stuff. Like they're just hanging out, like they're in each in a room, like it's their office and they live there. It's each, it's their apartment. They each have this like apartment in heaven behind these doors. And Virgin Mary's the landlord. I don't know what's going on with that. But anyway, so we have a sequence there, and then at the end of the second episode is when Zendaya opens the thirteenth door. Mary comes back and sees, and then at the end of the second episode, she gets sent back down, mute, into the tree. Third episode, tree time. Third episode in the wilderness, make and do, figuring it out in the winter. At the end of the third episode, the king finds her, she goes back to the kingdom. Then the next episode, she gets familiar with the kingdom, gets familiar with the king, they establish their relationship. Probably do two episodes even with that. That's a pretty that's a pretty big transformative time period. So we do two episodes of getting familiar with the king and the kingdom, meeting the king's counselors. Some of them are probably gonna be suspicious of her. There's lots of dynamics there. She's got some townspeople that she interacts with regularly who like her. And then after two or three episodes, then she has the baby. Mary comes back, and at the end of an episode. Mary takes that baby. That's when things really heat up. Next episode, there's some tension in the kingdom because where the baby go? Things are sort of building. She has another baby. Could probably get one or two episodes between the first baby and the second baby. Then Mary comes back, takes that baby. Then things are really heating up. Then we get into the drama of her and the king and the kingdom and the counselors and her trying to make everything seem fine, even though she's mute, which I'm presuming is very difficult. And then after another couple episodes, probably get two episodes of that. There's a lot of drama there. Then the third baby happens, gets taken. Very dramatic scene at the end where Maiden gets taken back up to heaven to see her, her children, and then doubles down again. And then in the finale, there's a whole episode of her struggling and being torn internally and figuring things out. And then that whole episode is just builds up to her on the stake, at which point she comes out with everything, and then Mary comes down. It can't end with everything just being great, though. That's not a satisfying ending. She just says, I did it, and then everything's fine. There needs to be some sort of extenuating twist. Because we gotta get a season two out of this. There's too much going on. So then maybe Mary comes back. Mary comes back with the babies. So the babies come back. Mary's coming with her. So it's like, oh, you have your babies back. But now there's this all-powerful nanny who's part of the deal. And so then season two might be a little sitcom <laughs> but I'm not opposed to that. Season two, we've got Mary in the mix figuring that whole dynamic out. I'm sure there would be some arguments between Virgin Mary and... And the king. Who's the king? We didn't cast the king. The king is Pete Davidson. The king's Pete Davidson. I think, all right, I'm just deciding. The king's Pete Davidson. That's the most entertaining choice. We're going to go with Pete Davidson. And that is how we adapt The Virgin Mary's Child for television. That is a hit. Sell it to Netflix or HBO. You could really get into it. 
If you made it dramatic and moody and, and more of a slow burn, it should be a real light. So that will do it for this week's episode of the Shadow Bear Story Sessions. Thank you for joining us. Next week, we're going to get into an episode called Good Bowling and Card Playing. Definitely not religious, that one. Sounds like an instructional video for how to be a cool teen in the 50s. Yeah, tune in next week and we will get into that. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. So thanks for tuning in. I'm Zach Stewart, and I will see you next week on The Shadow Bear Story Sessions. Mm -hmm.